This is Vicki Hoth. I'm the Education Coordinator for Handy Quilter, and I, uh, Marie Eldridge is joining me this morning. We're going to talk about finishing more quilts. For your information, the webinar is being recorded, and you will be able to uh, replay this tomorrow or Monday, probably Monday, even though we have it on the screen tomorrow. And we've got a special for you at the end of the webinar, so stick around for the coupon. There we are. Hello, Marie. Hello, Vicki. Hello, everyone. We're glad to be here. We're excited to share all of our ideas with you. That's right. And this has really been a fun webinar to put together. So the first thing is so many quilt tops. So many, so many questions. questions. <laughs> how to get those quilt tops done. Yeah. How many of you out there have a lot of quilt tops? just like this, sitting because you're afraid to tackle the quilt because you're, for, for there's, there's many issues. So let's go through some of the issues. Okay, the first thing we want to talk about today is the quilts that you see here today are from friends and associates from all over the world. And you may see a quilt pattern that you'd like to make, but we do not have the information for the piecing or fabric on the quilts viewed today. And I know some of you will be disappointed, but uh, we mean no disrespect to any pattern or fabric designer, but due to the time restraints, we don't have the information. So uh, thanks for liking them and, and enjoying this webinar. Okay, questions. All right, what is my skill level? A lot of times you don't uh, tackle the quilt because you just have, what skill level are you at? What tools do you have that you're able to use to do the quilt? Well, pantographs are great for doing quilts and finishing those tops. And groovy boards are very great because that keeps you in the lines and it's very structured. So for the beginners, and not so much beginners, it's a great tool. Stencils. I love stencils. Stencils are a good place to start, and then you can go from there. But stencils keep uh, the same kind of quilting throughout your quilt. So they're really an awesome way to do a quilt, and you can use them in borders or blocks. You can use a motif. So there's a lot of different ways to use stencils on your quilt. And you can use the stencil as a guideline to embellish it with other designs. Or freehand quilting. Now, a lot of us just say, that is my type of quilting, and I am going to just um, look at the quilt and just do whatever I want in it, which is great. Oh, there's a great tool, the Pro Stitcher. For those that are not confident in their freehand quilting, Pro Stitcher is a great tool. I love it. And there's still some decisions to be made, even if you have a Pro Stitcher, of how to quilt your quilt. Okay, now, what's the purpose of the quilt? Is it for a child? We're just adjusting our volume here, so just hold on just a minute. Hopefully you can hear that better. We just moved our mic. Is this, is it for a child? Is, is, it, for, is oh. it for a teenager? <laughs> is it quilts of valor? Is it a patriotic quilt? Mm. Or a show quilt? Now this quilt, just so you know, is from Sue McCarty who won the $10,000 award at Houston. This is a small quilt that she made after she made the large one. This is kind of a, it says, dreams do come true. How about a guy quilt? This is definitely a guy quilt. That, that yeah, that is definitely some guy's quilt. What about just a wall hanging, small or large, or a bed quilt? Oh. Or a, wedding quilt. <laughs> or a wedding quilt. We've made a few of these as wedding quilts. We've we? made a few of these. It's a beautiful quilt. Or how much time do I want to spend quilting? Do I want to just quilt edge to edge? It goes really fast. Or do I want to do custom quilting and put a lot of time into it? There is a lot of time in that one, isn't there? Do I want to try a new technique, such as rulers? A lot of times this is how I get an idea for a quilt, is I want to try something. So that's why, you know, you see a new technique, make a quilt and try it. 
Marie actually does that. She will see a technique and say, oh, I don't have the quilt, so I've got to make the quilt to make the technique work. So she's good for that. Oh, do how many are you comfortable with feathers? You know, practice. You gotta practice to try those feathers. This is micro quilting again, and sometimes you want to do a lot of micro quilting and sometimes just a little bit. It makes such a difference in the design and how it makes it pop. So one of the things on the design in the pink and yellow is that was a design a large design, but by putting the micro quilting in it, it actually transformed it and changed to a different look. Which that one was done by the pro stitcher first, and then added in the micro, kind of the uh, micro quilting. Micro quilting. All right, stencils. This is our one of our favorites, right next to all the other favorites we have. <laughs> next to our other favorites, <laughs> yes. So you can take the simple stencil or you can take the stencil pattern and then elaborate on it like Vicki was talking about. Adding feathers and all different designs because that the white, those are leaves, but by adding the feathers and the design in the leaves, it's really transformed that into something else. Look at that. That's a stencil, basket weave stencil design that you can find on the market, and then just all that embellishing, or not embellishing, but the extra, extra micro quilting has really made that basket weave pop. Okay, do I want to try a new technique? What about thread art? Look at this. Marie, tell me about this. So this was, a, I saw a quilt that had the vine with uh, some green thread on it, so I quilted that green thread. That was done as I quilted it and just added that to the vine to make it accented. Looks a little furry, doesn't it? Or hairy. <laughs> <laughs> hairy, <laughs> hairy. Looks beautiful. Okay, thread art in bobbin work. This one was done. The, the quilt was all finished. Marie brought the quilt in and it's just like, ah, we need something else. So we added the bobbin work to that. Isn't that fun? So there's actually a feather quilted underneath that, but then we loaded the thread into the bobbin and accented it, went around the feathers. So that meant we had to turn the quilt so that the right side was underneath so that the bobbin thread showed, which was really nice. And that's the bobbin thread that doesn't go through the needle. And then just painting with thread art just painting thread and then adding your own paint colors to it. Or um, the, the oh. bird is Deloa Jones that she did, and she just created this with feathers and then painted it afterwards. And the other one is Helen Godden, and she took the color off. So she used a bleach to take the color off. She bleached that first and just Clorox bleach and then quilted it. Oh, and then just lots of thread art with, you know, wild colors. And the one on the right or the left is uh, Ellen Ann Eddy just using heavy, heavy thread and just having the time of her life with that. And the one on the right is Sue McCarty. And she, uh, this is one we have in the studio that she did. And you can see the birds are totally with the thread. Everything's with the thread. And then she just jeweled it. So just added some dimension. Okay, what type of batting do you use? So do you want it to be a high loft, like a comforter, as the one with the, with the flowers there, or do you want to do make some trapunto, adding batting, uh, two layers of batting, uh, uh, cotton poly on the bottom, and then adding some wool, and that gives it that dimension. Or you can actually do the real cutaway trapunto. So batting can make a big difference on how your on how it looks, how your quilt looks. So those are all decisions you need to make ahead of time. Do I want to try an, a new technique? So you can add embellishments to your quilt. Uh, usually, it's easier if you add like the yo-yos after you have quilted your quilt. Uh, this. <laughs> Oh, that's not quilted yet. That's not yeah. quilted yet. And there's ruching there on the right, which actually. You know, it just depends on how your embellishment is, but you can see that we quilted all around that, and that was already on the quilt. And you notice the one on the left has not been quilted yet. We're going to see that picture coming up, and we're going to talk about how to quilt it, even though the yo-yos have been added to it. 
There's some more uh, embellishment with chenille, and the picture on the right is with felt and buttons. Now, my recommendation, if you're a quilter for hire, and someone brings you a quilt that has buttons on it, you hand it back to them politely and say, would you please take those buttons off, and then I'll quilt your quilt. Because a lot of times it's really hard to quilt a quilt that has all that embellishing and buttons and jewels and whatever. And so tell them to do that after they quilt it, and it will make it a lot easier. Okay, what types of backing? Look at this. This is a minky quilt. We call this the ugly quilt because when Cheryl in our studio created this, her daughter said that is the ugliest quilt. But when she quilted that, I always thought it was beautiful, but she, when she quilted it, it just totally transformed it. And by adding the minky on the back, gave it that quilt on the back. Of course, the grandkids love it because it's so nice and fluffy, and you really see the texture. Which is what you hear all the time. Quilting makes the quilt. And in this, it was totally, you yep. could just see how it just made everything. All the colors, even the darks recede and the brights mm -hmm. came Pop together. Up, yeah. yeah, it was really pretty. And what about uh, if you're not confident in your quilting and you don't want people to really see the backing of your quilt? So put a busy back on it. And it shows those airs and things maybe that you're not, you don't want to show. Maybe some tension issues too that you want to hide. Hopefully there's nobody that has bad tension. Well, and if you're changing threads, sometimes this will also hide that if you have a busy back. That's true. And also, what about all that leftover fabric from the quilt? Put it into the back. Totally, you have another quilt on the back. And this quilt has been quilted just edge to edge because you really like, what are you going to quilt on that? A great pattern for edge to edge quilting. Okay, now threads. There are so many threads out there, so many threads. And you can choose your choice. You know, what color do you like? Choose it. It do you works. want a color that blends or do you want a color that shows? Yeah, as the picture in the center there, you really change the color or the look of that by adding a totally contrasting color to those leaves. So what type of color and or what type of thread do we use? We can use cotton, metallic, polyester, monofilament, rayon, hologram. All these threads are out there to use for you. Don't be afraid of them. We have uh, previous webinars on, on tension, on using threads. Go back to those and it will teach you how to, to become comfortable with those threads. One of the things we try to convince people is you're going to have less issues if you try to use the same color of thread on the top as the bottom. It doesn't have to be the same weight, but the same color of thread will work best on both sides, even if it's a different color than the bottom of your quilt. Um, and also, you can use a polyester thread on the top and a cotton thread on the bottom, or vice versa. And I love monofilament and then for, the top, yeah. for the top, and then I'm going to use probably like a 50 or 60 weight thread on the back so that it just works well together with that. And you can use cotton threads with cotton fabrics and you can use polyester threads with polyester fabrics. Polyester does not cut the fabric. So, you know, there's some old wives tales that talk about you cannot put polyester thread on your fabric. You can. There are some beautiful threads out there. Don't be afraid of those threads. They will not cut your fabrics. So are there contrasting values or similar values in the quilt? And why am I showing this picture here? Well, this is one of those things we were talking about where you want to change the thread color. For the red quilting on this, you can use red thread on the top and red thread on the bottom. And you just have a different look on the bottom. It's okay that the back of your quilt has that red thread. But on the front of your quilt, it looks beautiful. And then you don't have to worry about it when you're tensioning, if you see a little bit of a pin dot here and there. You have, it looks great on both sides. One of the things with, chain, with making sure we use the same thread colors is with this, the machines that we use, the big long arm machines, and we're moving in all these directions, the machines, no matter how good the machine is or how 
good you've tensioned, there is a tendency to have just a little bit of a dot because that thread changes direction and has to wrap around the thread as it goes up and over the thread. So that we just really recommend, and we're probably harping on that too much, but we really recommend that you use, match up those thread colors and you will have less issues as you're quilting. Okay, so I see a lot of contrasting value in this block. Okay, so you have a choice on your thread color. Are you going to want white and then white will show on your dark colors or do you want dark? This is actually an excellent pattern that was chose to design or to quilt this. This was from the Pro Stitcher and then we went back in and did some micro stitching in it. But I think this was a perfect time to use the dark thread and go across there. You lose it a little bit. You can see that. You lose it a little bit on the dark colors. Now on the right side there you can see where the threads just blend and you can use the same thread on the light purple and the dark purple and that's okay. But on this one I think the dark thread really makes the block. It does and you just get to make choices as we, we are the queens of the quilt. Okay. So why does this matter on contrasting values or similar values? Something like this, this is an edge to edge quilt. Um, I can do the same color thread through that whole quilt and not worry that, that one, the thread color is going to be more dominant in one fabric than another because it's just going to show texture. Marie, uh, you have something that I just love. Tell me about this. Well, this is a book that I started keeping when I very first started, and I keep an idea book with all the quilting designs that I've mastered or ones that I want to master, things that I've looked at and like. Sometimes this was one that I would refer to just to get ideas on how to quilt a quilt. So I still I use this book all the time. I have pictures in there. So is this all your artwork? These are, these are like in that little tiny one, there's some leaves and the background is that kind of sunshine Aztec design. Mm -hmm. And I practiced and practiced until I could do that design, you know, still probably not the best way it would have been, but for me, that was a good way well, to really learn. Awesome. <laughs> so draw, sketch, doodle, take photos for references, and then practice. Try drawing what you see. Try doing, quilting it out what you see and just keep practicing. But keep lots of sketches and doodles and photos for references and to help you get better and for ideas on quilts. So we call this the 3P. Practice, practice, practice. <laughs> and then practice again. <laughs> and then keep practicing. That's right. So I have pictures from magazines, from um, Dover Books. You can get ones that have copy free, copyright free designs that you can use. Get ideas from wrapping paper, greeting cards, fabric, the carpet at the hotel we take pictures of. Everywhere you go, look for design ideas and then write them down and keep them together so they're like a tool for you to use. I've even found designs on the bottom of my shoes. <laughs> <laughs> there really are designs works, everywhere, right? yeah, but you really want to keep good. it together so it works okay. for you. Okay, so another product that we really love in here and I think everybody should own is Pre Quilters Preview Paper from Quilters Touch. This is a plastic uh, sheet. It's uh, in 24 by, I can't even remember the dimensions of it. It's a roll of plastic and it has black. Uh, lines on the outside of it so that you can place it on your fabric and then you get those reference lines to not draw over onto the fabric as I have done. But um, you can use a permanent marker and it'll come off with rubbing alcohol or you can use dry erase markers and that comes off just with batting or just a paper towel. So if you use a dry erase eraser you'll get a lot of little black dots, flecks from the erase marker. So you'll want to move your plastic off of your, your preview paper, move it away from your fabric so you don't get those black flecks on. But we have found that just using a piece of batting to wipe it off, the batting will collect all of those flecks. So that's really a like great that. eraser. And see what it does. We have a block underneath there and we, we're previewing some designs on there to see how they're going to look before we quilt it. So, you are the queen of the quilt. 
and you, you rule. rule. <laughs> so we are going to go through some quilts and since we have quilters have lots of opinions on how they like their quilts and Marie thinks differently than Vicki and Cheryl and Angie that are in the studio. We all have our own opinions. Nobody is wrong. We just see things differently. And so today we're going to go through a few quilts and kind of show you some things to look at at quilts and uh, things that we have learned over the years. And uh, you're going to see some things differently than we see. And so uh, that's the awesome thing about it is you're the queen of your quilt and you get to quilt it. And hopefully some of the things that you see will give you a different idea and you'll think, oh, I would have done this whole different way. Well, by seeing two different ideas, you get another idea. And one of the great things that we learned is that we pin these up on a design wall um, in the studio and we step back 20 feet and we look at that quilt and there are times that you see different designs that you would have never thought was even in the quilt different ways maybe to quilt it. So that's today you can see these as they're up on the screen and you might see something differently than we are going to recommend on quilting. But this one, we'll start with this one. This is has quite similar values. So it could be edge to edge. Could be edge to edge. But you, you could custom quilt it. But you could custom quilt it. Um, when you do edge to edge, the individual block doesn't seem to be so as important. It loses its then the quilt just becomes about the texture. Okay. And so just looking at this, there's a plaid or a checked border on it. So we'll start with that border. And we could just do some cross hatching in that border. But we have to sometimes be careful how we piece things because it didn't end up right in the corner. So if we do that cross hatching, it doesn't quite end up the way it should. So. So hopefully from what you learn or see today, you'll maybe think about piecing your quilts a little bit different. That would have been one of the things that you would have been very careful about. Then your quilting would have been very easy. Mm -hmm. Okay, so with this quilt, you're seeing individual blocks, but let's look for the secondary design in this block. See where the blue lines are? We have actually created a different block than what you see. So you can add feathers to that. See, now we're not doing edge to edge. We're actually doing custom quilting on this. Straight lines with this. Lots of different ideas in each one of those corners. Is Now, <laughs> we're going to do a disclaimer here. We are drawing on plastic with a big, bold, dry erase marker. <laughs> so, and we're, our quilting looks much better than our drawing. So just, just remember that as you see some of these pictures today because we do quilt better than this. Well, we could do straight lines because we use rulers. Yeah. <laughs> but we do much better feathers too. Okay, so we're looking at that. Now we've taken that block and put four blocks together and just added some type of a design. Not necessarily that one. That might, may not be your choice. But you any motif your, would work over those uh -huh, four. And you could use your Pro Stitcher, which is the computerized quilting machine that we have that can go on your machine and the pro stitcher will just stitch out those blocks or, or a choice. A, a choice, block. right. You could do each block individual or you could do an edge to edge. And as you see, the plastic is over the top of this and we're previewing each one of those. Okay, now we've changed quilts again. Uh, again, looking at the border, this border was maybe if we had placed the border flowers differently, we could have done something different. We'll show you that in another quilt coming up because this quilt, this border fabric has been used in two different quilts. But looking at the quilt, what do you see, Marie? Well, you see the Ohio Star. And I see cross grits. Okay. And a little four patch in the center. Yeah. So, so if we treat it with the cross grid rather than working, I mean, you could work that Ohio Star totally, but if you work that cross grid and then put some other flower or element in your four patch. And See, now i got to quilt everything to death, so I look at that white and go, oh, yeah, I could do lots of micro stitches yes, in there. Could. Yes, you could. Okay, so another way of looking at those blocks. Okay, so the one on the left, you're seeing adding curved lines to straight lines, and that always softens a quilt and kind of brings it together. But you don't always have to do that. You can do straight lines on straight lines. Yeah, you're the queen of the quilt. You can. 
You can. Or you can combine different elements, stitch in the ditch and then adding the curves with feathers. So you can add different elements together. Okay, let's move on to another quilt, a heart quilt. Oh, shoot. <laughs> I gave the answer. What is the theme? Like you didn't know. <laughs> Hard. Hard to tell. Okay, this is one that I would stitch in the ditch around those hearts and emphasize, you know, the ruffle that's in there. And in each one of those fabrics, there is kind of a, most of those fabrics have a plaid look in them. And so um, you could just plaid in each Follow block. the plaid and you would have cross hatching in each one of the hearts. And then just echo the hearts. Some are bigger, some are smaller, so some will have more. Mm -hmm. Some you could echo into the background even. And the border, there's different borders. There's a cross hatch border, there's a curly border, or you could use a heart border. I mean, there's lots of options. That's why the preview paper, putting it over, previewing, I don't want to have to unpick if I don't like it. <laughs> you don't like to unpick? No. <laughs> Okay, this is that fabric again. You can see that if if this had been pre-planned saying, hey, I want to really take advantage of the flowers in that fabric, I'd cut that fabric differently. So with that, and we, what else do you see in this quilt? Lots of white. Yeah, and what are you going to do with that? <laughs> Lots of white, and that quilting is going to show. All right, there's our border. So look how... By taking that border and putting some straight lines there, you create new blocks. I love that. Yeah. And then, seen on the, the preview paper there, you could, what are you going to do in those outside triangles? Piano keys. You can Shimmer. piano key into those. So the trick on doing piano keys is to put your ruler there and go into the design and back out. Right over the top of the thread. Right on the same stitch so you don't move your ruler come across it two times. And I would use black thread on this with a fine thread that would be a 50 or 60 weight so that you don't see that bulk of that thread. For the piano key. Uh-huh, for the right. piano key. Or you could do chevron in those little shapes, those spaces that you've made there. Mm -hmm. So if you're doing cross hatching or even coming into this, you can sneak around on your uh, embellish or your applique or your, like a question was asked on the do you come all the way in? How do you travel? How do you travel? So you can sneak around on your cross hatching when you have an applique in the center of it. You can sneak around the edge of your applique or you can just cut your threads. Yeah, it, but if you want to go fast, that over stitching with a fine thread, you'll never even notice that, which is really nice. Yes, I love the great fine threads that are yes. out there. Okay, so we've added cross hatch to this. And you, we've repeated that same element throughout the quilt. So there's two different size blocks. Add cross hatch in the little block. Put a little cross hatch in the block that those are supposed to be feathers. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well. But there's some straight lines. So if we put the straight lines in the border, there are straight lines again. So we've repeated that throughout the quilt. So you try and bring it all together and repeat those elements throughout the quilt. Okay, so auditioning is really important, a different ideas. Okay, so the first time you design something, it's not always the winner, is it? So the person that owns this quilt? She suggested ferns. So what do you think? <laughs> not those ferns. <laughs> she didn't like it either. Okay, well, maybe they, we need to draw them differently. I don't know. That's maybe a possibility. Getting closer. It's getting all, closer. It's all getting up closer, to but it makes such a difference to see them drawn out on the fabric. So drawing saves a lot of unpicking later. It's amazing. Like I, say, I don't like to unpick. Uh -huh, yeah. Okay, so the first one's not always the winner. Drawing saves a lot of unpicking later, and this could be maybe a Halloween quilt. Yeah, you might want to save this design some other place that might work. Okay, so if you'd use permanent permanent marker on your preview paper, you could save that for later and say, hey, this is going to look great on some other quilt. Well, and even for a texture, it might look nice on another quilt. So eliminating ideas is, not ju is, is just as important as coming up with good ideas. It's true. A lot of times you have to see one to know to get rid of it. And then sometimes you know what you don't like when you see it. And then it gives you an idea to go the opposite direction. Yeah. Around and 
a lot of times when you quilt or you're drawing, you actually come up with something like, wow, that's a new thing. How do you think Karen McTavish came up with her idea? She probably drew it. Yeah, I'm sure she drew a lot. <laughs> I'm sure she drew a lot. Okay, here's our next quilt. This is the overall quilt, and what does what do we see? What's the big thing in there? <laughs> big thing. You see those big dark squares, or in the big big flower. Okay, interesting. See those big dark squares don't point out, don't stand out to me. Is the thing I see? I see that big flower. And what are you going to do with that flower? Well, that tells me that probably I wouldn't put hearts in this. I would put flowers in this. So you want flowers in the basket? Okay. Oh, it's a flower basket. That's, yeah. So that tells me right there. Just seen that. Now I've got to figure out how am I going to get those flowers in that basket or what type of flowers I want to put. You can use the Pro Stitcher. You could use stencils. You could use a stencil and break it apart and just take a part of a stencil. You could try and do a feather hand. that's similar to the one that's there. So mm -hmm. yeah, a lot of different flower ideas. A feather? A flower. That's oh, okay. Similar. I'm going. I don't see any feathers in there. Sorry. No. Okay. So the next with the basket, different ways of doing that basket. Three different ways. If you're not going to do a lot of quilting, you can just stitch in the ditch. Well, and look at what a difference. If you stitch in the ditch on the one on the left and then the one next to it, that's just adding one more line into it. But what a difference it makes in the design. Really makes it a basket with that. Yeah. So if I'm not really sure and you do a wiggle line around each of those, I still like the look that that gives and I don't have to be quite so careful. You can probably quilt mm -hmm. that a lot faster than if you're doing rulers. And this is a nice one. You can travel from one point to another if you get to an area that you're finished and you just need to travel in the ditch. You can do that. Yeah. Okay, now those big black blocks that you saw I think if you did some straight line around each one as like the white shows on there, it would frame that basket in each block. And I mean, that's one way. That is such a totally different look. Yeah. Yeah. And the black does not show your quilting very that's much. That's true. So if you use black thread or a, a, a matching thread, you're not going to see only texture. But if you want that to show, you know, see what the white lines do, it really pops that up. So if you used a, a thread color that matched the light texture, the light print, you know, it's the quilter's choice. And part of that choice is your skill level, you know, what you're comfortable with and how much time you want to put into it also, I guess. Straight lines framed that basket. Okay, here's our next quilt. Mm, what are the cues in this quilt? A <laughs> uh, little busy and lots of, oh, what are those? Oh, flowers. flowers. <laughs> so really, when I first got this quilt, this is a, a customer of mine. When I got it, I just put it out in the frame thought, whoa, what am I going to do with this? But when I hung it up on the wall, started breaking it apart and looking at it, they started talking to me. And you're going to be surprised at the things that it said to me. Okay, so, and it was said to all of us. I'm so surprised it was talking. <laughs> yeah, so flowers, obviously, is what okay. I'm going to quilt in here. I could actually do an edge to edge on this because it is so busy, but we're going to break it up. We're going to do a little custom quilting on it. Lots of flowers. All right, so that's the first, the one uh, strip, and they're just different piece blocks, and you can do different blocks in each one, a different quilting. Or if you wanted to do a strip of a pantograph across that, you could do that. So when I load this, I'm going to actually go back to the previous. When I load this quilt on the frame, I'm going to load it so that I pin the length, the longest part, to the leaders, and I will do row by row because you can totally see the rows in that. Don't you think that works? That works. So that first on the row on the left, you could individualize each block, or you could do a pantograph type right across all of them, or to some type of free hand. All right, and then the quilting is going to show in your light areas. So if you custom this and do each block different, you can do flowers there in the white part or the light part, and thread color will really make a big difference. You can change colors. You can just do one color, or you can do a color that's going to blend with all of it. Thing you want to be careful of is that you do 
if you're doing like different sampler blocks is that you do the same amount of quilting, like the same basic density, density mm -hmm. for each block. Okay, so now the next row there is like this arrow looking pointing down, but I changed it. I thought I'm going to make them blocks. And by doing that, I can do some different looks in that. Do you see? Who would have thought to do that and actually make a block there rather than have accentuate that arrow? It makes it such a different look. Mm -hmm. and, then, and I really like this look. And what would I put in the block? A flower. Uh, you think? <laughs> you works. want a flower? <laughs> it works. Okay. And then th some things are really obvious. So stitch in the ditch around your applique and add some texture to it and you're off good to go. And if it was Marie, she would uh, micro quilt the background of that so that that flower would really pop. So there's our flowers there. All right, the next quilt, what does this tell you? <laughs> There's open real estate. Are we clever? <laughs> we got houses and we're using real estate. Oh. I didn't even think of that. Open real estate for quilting to show. So when I see those triangles on the side, I'm like, oh, that's just begging for a feather. Yeah, and this is a traditional quilt, so we could beg for those feathers. So there, there we go. There you go. There's a feather. And I think this is a perfect quilt to do lots of feathers. You can do a really nice border, and you can do all of those um, outside ones. I probably use a neutral color in those outside for the feathers, but in the red, I'm going to change. Go to a red. A red? Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely, I would. But you could actually pick up the little dots, that color, and it would it would show some feathers and look nice in it. What about a brown? Look at those brown roofs. Ooh. You could. See? Look at the options. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we've got the house blocks. We've got log cabin blocks, we have a piece block, and we have an applique block. Let's look here, and we can kind of see all the blocks here. In the center, the piece block, I really like those, those triangle, red triangles, are piece, they're small enough that you really wouldn't have to quill them. So if I stitched in the ditch around them, it would make those pop. Then if you, in all of your cream area, or the white area, if you micro quilted it, that would really make it pop. Then in your red squares, you could do a continuous curve. In the brown square, or the round, brown triangle, look what happens if you put a chevron in there. It frames that center block. And the very center, it looks like that fabric has kind of a grid in it, so you could just do a grid there. Or you could. You do could. The, the only thing is the way it's pieced. The grid doesn't go from corner to corner. Do you notice that? Mm. Close enough. Close. Okay. I'd be good with that. All right. Or you could do. Or you could repeat that continuous curve from the blocks that from the red blocks. Yeah. The red squares. Now you can see a log cabin in the lower left corner and a log cabin in the top right corner. And there's two different ways of doing it. You could just straight stitch, stitch in the ditch, or or you could do a wiggle stitch. And you could do, not on the line, you could do a straight stitch, or you could do a wiggle stitch inside each of those strips. Okay, and then the applique block, uh, the fabric, you already stole that idea, that cross stitch. Yeah. Oh, if the fabric it makes it easy for you, I'm saying use totally. the fabric. And then yeah. stitch in the ditch around that applique, use the fabric for a crosshatch, and then in the house, the fabric in the windows, which we'll move to out oh, there, we'll can, right there, has that same crosshatch, so you could crosshatch your windows. Do a little uh, log work with your rulers, make logs on there. Yeah. Do a little chevroning. I mean, the it roof. just repeats yeah. that throughout there, and we're good to go. Isn't yeah. that nice? All right, the next quilt is a watermelon quilt. <laughs> I say it's a watermelon quilt. <laughs> Marie thinks it's a sailboat. I think those look like sails, but we'll make it look like a watermelon. Or we'll make okay. it look cool. So this has a lot of opportunities for quilting to show because they're quite solid colors, not a lot of print in them. So let's have some fun here. But... 
How about let's go in for the modern look in this quilt instead of feathers. So modern quilting can be a lot of repetitive of the same simple design or the same simple ele element. Now imagine that we drew straight lines here and really round circles, but this would be awesome. <laughs> this would be a really beautiful quilt. I'd love to see this quilted out. You want to do this? I, I think was you just going to say, this. do you want to quilt it? <laughs> you do circles so well. Okay, and the trick is this ruler. I love this ruler. This mini circle ruler. I did a quilt and I brought it in and Vicki said, wouldn't that have been a really nice quilt if you'd have done those circles around She's and still used a ruler? <laughs> so I'm doing a quilt. I'm using this ruler. I love it. I it love it. it, it was, this would really quilt up quite quickly, I think. With, okay. Yeah, you'd and like with it. your so you've got in one ruler you've got your straight line that you can do all the straight line part and your circles. Oh, this oh, is another option. So this is totally against the rules here. What's the rule? Well, that you put a curve on a straight. So you put in straight on straight here, straight on straight, which is modern quilting. Modern quilting breaks a lot of rules it, that people think are rules. But that's why we are the queens. That's why. Can you picture this on that whole quilt and seeing that repeated and repeated? Mm -hmm. This would be That's awesome. Nice. That would be really pretty. Now, this is different. It accentuates the rind, so you have that rind there. Uh, gives you that watermelon effect in the center. Little seeds in there too, huh? You could. But what I really like is the next part. That? No, this part. The ideas that you came up with for the border. So this border, I think there's six borders on this. So combine the borders and treat them as one. And look how, you know, that's the same quilting as, let's go back here, as this. It could be the very same as that. But but it just looks like a little Tied watermelon in the side there mm -hmm. in between those chevrons just by repeating that shape. Anytime yeah. you can repeat that same element in a quilt and keep it going throughout, I, it just unifies the quilt. Okay, this quilt, I just was really surprised when I hung that up and I saw, what did I see? Oh, I had Herringbone. Herringbone, <laughs> thank you. I'm going. <laughs> See, that what one I see? What did I see? I saw <laughs> it was five from, minutes ago. From, five minutes ago. From a distance, I saw herringbone. I didn't see that when I was just piecing and just working with the quilt. But let's what what blocks do you want to emphasize? The block that was pieced, and so that gives you that white emphasis. Or what about that? Is that your emphasis? Quilting on white shows more texture than quilting on a darker fabric. So this is a little modern look here, and it really gives movement to this quilt. Okay, and sometimes people worry about the quilting being so close together and that it makes the quilt stiff. I don't really find that problem. I, I love, I can't get it close enough on this. <laughs> but look at the difference. Look, who would have thought? I think it turned out really fun. Okay. okay, so we're going to try some other things. Mm. We're not sure, but we're going to try it. So we, we previewed it. Good for maybe another quilt. Who knows? But, you know, there's some... We actually put kind of a modern look with those circles and then the feathers. Just different ideas to, well, what do we want to do? Probably not so much that big flower in that block. I that do the flower? Well... <laughs> It's okay. <laughs> it is okay. And sometimes it tells you exactly, no, that is definitely not what I want. Yeah. Yeah. Draw them out to see what you really were like. Okay, the next quilt. This has been a quilt that we I keep bringing back to work and trying to get people to help figure out how to quilt it. This has dimension to it. So do I want to quilt down that dimension or do I want to leave it floating? So look at a good look at that quilt. The, the block is the star, the four-point star. So this this is a nice way of quilting that, adding so some feathers. Does it matter to you if the dimension's lost? Not me. It doesn't. So for you it was had just I a known, way to piece it? Mm -hmm. Had I known, I probably would never have made the quilt because it was hard to quilt piece and get it right because of the dimension. 
Okay. But I like the looks of the quilt. So, so go back to that last picture. So so when we drew this, we the inside star is quilted about a quarter inch from the edge of the fabric so you get a on that. Of that lip. So you would get a little bit of that. What you know? What and I that? love the feathers because I think this is a traditional quilt. The fabrics in it speak to me that way. So I like the feathers. So these are just options that you're mm -hmm. seeing here. Different ways of doing the feathers and different either feathers inside the star or straight lines inside yep. the star. Okay, so that's another choice. It's okay. What a difference. Yeah. Doesn't that, that nice. make a difference? I really like it when I see it on the fabric. So it makes, I think the preview paper is better than a sketch. Yeah. I mean, sketch gives you a lot of ideas, but the preview paper on top of the fabric really gives you what you're going to end mm -hmm. up with pretty okay, close. Okay, now, hmm, I'm going to go back here. There's my star, but I just drew it different. I, a secondary design here. Look, look how that pulls out that, those uh, half square triangle blocks and actually gives you a really different look, which I actually really liked. I thought it looked nice. It's giving me my feathers that I like, that I can put in there. But I, I'm really lent, tending to, I think this is where it's going to get quilted. Something it's going to get quilted? <laughs> I think he just needs time. <laughs> okay, now we're going to go through some quilts, and we're just going to let you look at them, and uh, we're going to talk just a little bit about them. This, uh, there are quilts hanging all over Handy Quilter. We have over 80, 90 quilts hanging over hand, throughout Handy Quilter. This is a wonky looking house, and look how fun that quilting just made that. All these house blocks are just wonky, but that I think is just really fun. On the contrary, this is a very traditional looking house. And very traditional quilting. Very traditional. Okay. A lot of stitch in the ditch. Well, here's a show quilt. And you want your quilting to show, so you use those plain fabrics or very little solids. Yeah, use your solids, and you just see the feathers and the micro stitching, and this just. And in the yellow orangish fabric, the, those feathers, she's actually put an orange thread in there that helped make that pop. So it just depends on that thread you choose to make it pop. And puddle your thread on your fabric to see what you feel, how it feels. This is just a scrappy quilt. Again, you know, you've got a lot of choices here as far as thread colors. Repeat, the, you notice in the outside border how they've repeated that flower that matches the flower that's the raw edge. This is a pinwheel, and look at how it's quilted. This is a different way to quilt it, even into the little border around it, and you're seeing a lot of movement just by how you make your quilting design on top of the OT, or the block itself. So what do we do with um, quilt of the block, or month, block of the month quilts, or um, block, so, uh, uh, Sampler quilt block quilts. Do we quilt every block the same and just put the same motif over each one, or do we do one eat differently? And I personally, when I do a block of the month or a sampler, I I custom quilt each block, but each block repeats some element in every one of the other blocks. What do you do? You could actually do edge to edge on this because they're just. Sampler. You could, you could, but why would you do that? <laughs> You learn a lot. You learn a lot, but I love to see how the quilting makes each block look unique. Mm -hmm. you know? And and there's a lot of curves in this, and if you're not confident with your curves, that's where the rulers, the circle rulers are amazing to get that perfect curve. Okay, so there's probably some people who don't like as much quilting as I like, and that's up to them, you know? Some people quilt very... I would have a hard time quilting like this because I like it quilted but, really. But when you started, you didn't. That's true. When you started quilting, because I started you <laughs> yes, years you ago, <laughs> you you were not a heavy micro quilter. That's true. That's true. But now yeah. you do the micro quilting, and that adds that at, that accentuates those because Marie's a big applicator, lots of needle turn applique, and your micro quilting really accentuates. 
Well, and then that goes back to the first of what is your quilt for. So basically that, that does enter into your decision of how much quilting is too much quilting. Mm -hmm. You know, what it's for, if it's for a child, I am not micro-stitching for well, any of my grandchildren, even though they are, you know, yeah. they're the best, you mm -hmm. know. So the other thing, too, is if you're doing for custom, do a custom quilting for hire, is the customer going to pay for that? You know, you got to think about that, too. Let's move on. Go ahead. This is your quilt block. Okay, so this is a style that I saw someone else do, and so I did this quilt just so I could see that right next to the shape is micro-stitched, and then there's that little... Um, what do you want to call that? Double line with the ruler mm -hmm. going around that it. really frames Real it. Real space, so it frames it. So that was just something I wanted to try. So it worked. It worked really nice. And it's a Christmas quilt, so what designs did you put in it? Holly. And that's kind of an overall edge mm -hmm. to edge kind of. Yeah. That's not quilted to death. <laughs> There's ferns in the side. <laughs> okay, so there, here's some quilt blocks that we worked on and some different ways to do the background and uh, feathers to individualize each block, each piece of it, so that in the top block, top left block, you notice the blue is not quilted. It was just stitched in the ditch around it, and then the feathers really pop because it's a light fabric. Then the center block. I like that you just put a motif, motif on top of this, a design. This was done with the Pro Stitcher, and we just picked a design put it on top of that block and did not pay attention in, or have the design of the block, the star, dictate where your shapes or where your quilting had to be. And I love how this turned out, that you just ignore and don't have to pay attention to those lines and mm -hmm. stay within them. So then we just came back in and, of course, did a lot of little background stitching on it. Yeah, good. Thread color. Thread color can make it or break it. I really like that design on top of there, and look how different just quilting inside of there makes that design look, makes different parts of the design pop. And on this one, you don't necessarily lose all of that dark. It kind of blends, but you see what it accents. On the right side, you can see we're just doing rulers at different distances apart, different spacing, what a difference that makes, and then just adding a flower to it. So different elements together work, because you've repeated the feather and probably throughout the block, there's going to be more straight liners throughout the quilt, more straight line quilting. The card trick, feathers. I love the way this what makes that that card trick block work. And yeah. then you had a great idea there. I think we like feathers. Look at how that's flying geese. Put feathers in there and let your outside uh, fabrics, which are plain, just let them... Stand Which, this own. looks really big here, but it was really tiny. It's really small. And you can do feathers really small. Ladybug, look how the background feel pops the ladybug, pops the flowers, makes those little ladybugs just march right along there. And you've repeated the same design from doing that circle inside the flower and then doing again in the border print. Mm -hmm. And again, in the pinwheel, the pinwheel, the white, is quilted, but the red is left unquilted to just give some dimension there. So, you know, you this webinar being recorded, you can go back and just look at pictures and get ideas. You know, it's a great, I, I do a lot of searching on the web and finding pictures and, and just giving me ideas for future quilts. This is a quilt that has minky on it, and look. Dimension adds adds lots of adds that texture. Yeah, and minky is so fun to quilt with. It is not. Don't there's. I don't have any fear with quilt quilt down minky. It doesn't stretch. I mean, yes, it does stretch, but you just be careful as you put it on, as you load it for backing, and just work with it. It's beautiful to quilt with. Here's some awesome quilting on this one. Straight lines and feathers together, and you have the straight lines of the star itself. Put a lot of feathers. Yeah, this is nice. This is an airplane quilt. Every airplane is quilted different, but all the borders are the same. So you can, you know, emphasize the airplane. Do I don't some see any feathers on that. This is a guy quilt. I didn't call for feathers, did <laughs> it? Didn't see, that's the thing. Yep. Watch that. Airplanes don't call for feathers. 
Now oh. this, I love this quilt because the center fabric is just a, a modeled fabric. There's not a print in it. The quilting made the print and it is just beautiful. Yeah, Lots of thread beautiful. play with that. Lots of thread quilting. Yeah. More feathers. More feathers. Look how they, how that shows in the white. All right, last month we did, we talked about using rulers and doing continuous curve, and this was Cheryl's quilt. And look how beautiful that is with the kid, that same shape repeated, and she was so careful with those rulers. And then with the pro stitcher, she put the feathers in between. Okay, the quilts you've seen today are from friends and associates from all over the world. You may see a quilt pattern that you'd like to make, but we do not have the information for the piecing or the fabric on the quilts viewed today. We mean no disrespect to any pattern or fabric designer, but due to our time restraints and where we've purchased or uh, inherited these quilts, the information is not at our disposal. Now, we are so excited because next month, February 14th, we're doing another webinar by Quilt by Bye. Committee. And we're going to let have you send us pictures right. and let us help you get your quilts finished. So next month, the Handy Quiller team will give you advice on how to quilt your quilts. So send us a photo of a quilt that you're stumped on or that you just want suggestions, send it to the, a webinar at handyquilter.com with the subject, There Is Help, and send them before February 1st. We'll go through as many as we can during the webinar hour, and we'll actually have previewed them before, so we'll have some ideas. Please don't be upset with us if we don't get to your quilt, because we want to choose quite a variety of quilts. And guess what? You get to be part of the committee. <laughs> so during the webinar, you have the opportunity to type in your suggestions. And some of you have been typing questions today, and so we're going through those. And uh, keep in mind that all quilters have good ideas, and we would love to share them all, but we, won't all, we, we may not be able to get to every idea that you type in. But we can't wait. We are excited to see your quilt tops. So get your cameras out and start snapping photos. And thank you for joining us today. This has been so much fun for us, and I hope it has been for you. We'll see you next month, February 14th, Valentine's Day. We have a date. <laughs> we have a date at 11 o'clock Mountain Standard Time. We are in Utah, and that is Mountain Standard Time. So thank you. The topic, Quilt by Committee. See you next month. Bye-bye.